So we're going to copy that, going to put this over here in J26, right click, paste, one, two, three, and the credit will be for then the amount that is in there of a negative for the credit, 530,000. Now, of course, we have an uneven debits and credits. The credits are winning by that 80,000. They're winning by what we are going to call the loss. That's the loss on the sale because we sold it for less than what we had it on the books for. Therefore, we're going to need another debit here. That debit will be the loss. We, In this case, notice over here in the worksheet, we allocated that loss directly to the capital accounts. We could do that here, but first uh, I'm going to record it as we basically would record it if it was a normal business transaction into the loss on the income statement. See the loss on the income statement, then uh, allocate that loss in a closing type process to the capital accounts in this format. So let's see what that would look like. If we sold inventory at a loss, we would then record the gain of the loss here in on the income statement in N33 in this case. Right click, copy. I'm going to paste that in J27. Right click, paste 123. We know the loss is that debit of 80,000 here. I'm going to do what I call like the plug formula to calculate that 80,000, which will be summing up these cells and flipping the sign. So if I sum to these sales, it would be a negative 80. We want a positive 80. Therefore, instead of selecting equals, I'm gonna select negative and then sum of these four cells. So the 450 minus the 530 gives us 80. So it's gonna flip the sign. And we already knew it was gonna be 80, of course, because that's, the, that's what we needed in there. I'm just gonna use a formula to do so. Now, if we highlight the two debits, they add up to 530, which is the credit. And if we highlight all of it, it adds up to zero. So we are in balance. Note here that I put this uh, amount on the bottom, even though it's a debit. And, and again, some people that could disturb some people, like I say, in my opinion, that helped me to think through the process to build the journal entry. So that's why um, I put it in that format. And it helps us to put that kind of plug formula in the gain area. So if you're working in a, in a lot of uh, programs, it's not going to matter if, the, if it's not in order with the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. However, if you're putting the information into something that's going to be automatically graded in some kind of format, you may want to put the two debits on the top uh, so that you, you're not marked off for just uh, properness of debits on top. All right, so let's post this out. We're going to post the cash first. Here's the cash. Here's the cash here. We're going to post this to the adjusting column in P25 by saying equals and point to the cash of 450. That's a debit. This is a debit. It's going to make the debits go up in the debit direction like so and put us out of balance down here. We will then go to the inventory. The inventory is right here. It's right here on the trial balance. We're going to go into the blue area in P26 and say equals point to that inventory. What's going to happen to inventory? It's going to go down to zero. So the inventory is now off the books. We have now sold it. Then we're going to report the gain, which is going to be or the loss. In this case, it's a loss. We lost money. And that's going to equal the 80,000. So 80,000 is going to go up in the debit direction. And we're representing a loss, meaning that uh, we lost money. That's represented by a debit on the income statement. Now we're going to do kind of like the closing process. We're going to close out what's in net income, in this case net loss, 80,000, to the capital counts of our three partners in accordance with their profit sharing, which of course will be this calculation that we did over here. So the loss needs to now be closed out. This is kind of like a, the uh, closing process. It's got a debit in it. We need to make it go to zero. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm going to copy that, copy it, and I'm going to try to put this credit on the bottom, so that's going to be it, it, to do it the proper way. So I'm going to skip a line, go to the new uh, account, then I'm going to skip three more lines, one, two, three, because that's where the uh, capital accounts will go. And then I'm going to right click and paste one, two, three. So again, you, you, you could put the credit on top. It's not really going to disturb anyone. I mean, it's not going to be wrong technically if you put the credit on top as long as you're in the credit column, but uh, we'll try to put this on the bottom and that's going to be the negative 80,000 that we will credit it to make this go to zero. Then what's the debit going to be? We're going to debit something 80,000 and of course that will be these three capital accounts in accordance with their, prop, with their uh, profit sharing percentages. So let's copy these three. I'm going to 
highlight these three capital accounts for the three partners, copy it, and put that on top. So we're going to put it in J29, right click and paste one, two, three. All right, now we already, we've already calculated the percentages that we need to debit, 40, 26, 667, and 13, 333. Three, three. I'm going to recalculate them here just so we can see that one more time. So what I'm going to do is say negative, because I want to debit, I'm going to say negative of this number. That'll take the 80, flip the sign. Then I'm going to multiply that 4K times K's capital count over here and enter. And we come up with this same 40,000. Notice it's a negative number here and it's a debit over here because the debit is what's going to reduce the credit capital count on, on this worksheet. So this is a plus and minus worksheet. This, of course, is a debit and credit worksheet. So then we're going to do the same thing for C. We're going to say C. I'm going to say negative instead of equal to take that 80,000 and flip the sign times and then we'll point to C's capital balance. The 33.33, that'll give us the same 26667 we had here. Note then uh, again that because we multiplied it times this cell, then it's going to be slightly different than if we just multiplied it times uh, 0 0.3333 because of rounding. We're going to do the same thing for M. I'm going to say M is a negative of this 80,000 times, and then we're going to point to M's capital count, the 1667, and enter, and that gives us our 13333, which matches this number here. Do our debits equal our credits? Let's, let's take a look. Debits tie out to 80,000 equals the credit. If we highlight all four of them, the debits minus the credits equal zero. All right, let's post this out and see what happens, see if it does what we expect it to do. What do we expect it to do? We expect the gain to go away and closed out to zero, and we expect the capital counts to be decreased from where they started out to these numbers here. All right, let's see that, and so we'll post K first. So here's K's capital count, here's K's capital count on the trial balance. We're gonna post it to the entries column by saying equals, then point to this 40,000. That's a debit, this is a credit, those are opposites, meaning it's gonna make it go down to 53,000, which matches our worksheet over here. We're gonna post C then, here's C the, on the journal entry, here is C in the trial balance. We're gonna post it to the middle column, being P29 equals point to the 26667. That's a debit, this is a credit, it's gonna make the credit go down to 25833, which matches our worksheet. Then we're gonna go to M, we're gonna say M is here, here it is on the trial balance, here's where we're gonna post it in the entries column equals we're going to point to the 13333 what's going to happen it's going to bring this down to 153667 matches our worksheet now we're going to report the gain Here, here's the gain or loss the loss in this case and we're going to post that here there's something in it therefore we're going to double click on it go to the end of it and say plus and point to that 80,000 so we have 80 in it it's going to go down because we're doing the opposite thing to it and put it back in balance like so. So now we've allocated this out and we can see that we have a our allocation of the uh, capital accounts to our partners matches our worksheet over here. We can now go to the next step. What's the next step? We're going to pay off now the payable account. We now have the cash to pay off the payable account. We'll do this in two ways. We'll do it with the worksheet. Then we'll come over here and do it with uh, the journal entries. And again, some people prefer one or the other. We'll do it both ways so we can kind of see what it would look like. So we're going to pay off the liabilities. Liabilities are going to be here. We're representing liabilities, which is to simplify just one account, the payable to liability account of 240. We've got to pay that with the cash now. So that's going to go down to zero. So we're going to pay off negative 240. This is going to go down to zero. What's going to happen to cash? It will also go down because we're paying cash. So negative 240 like that then we're going to subtract this out now note we don't care about this stuff up here this is old news what we're looking at is the previous balance this is where we stand as of this point in time and then we're going to post our activity then we're going to have our new balance this is where we stand after the this activity of paying off the liability so let's let's do that calculation then we're going to say this equals and point to the 632.5 plus and note that this is a negative number so we're going to say plus that negative number, which is the subtraction problem, bringing us down to the 392.5. We're going to do the same thing over here in E. We're going to say this equals point to the 240 
plus this negative number, and that'll bring it down to zero. And then we're just gonna bring these capital account balances down. There's no effect on the capital accounts, so we're gonna say that this equals the same 53 tab. C, this equals the same 185.833 tab. And then for M, this equals the same uh, 153.667 and enter. So here's our information. We're going to do this with a journal entry now and do the same kind of transaction. And we should end up with cash at the end of the day and a capital count distribution in this format, which is the same as where it was last time. And of course, payable will then be at zero. So let's think about this in terms of the trial balance. So in the trial balance, what are we doing? We're paying off this liability with cash. So is cash affected? Yeah, we're paying cash to pay off the liability. Cash has a debit in it. We're gonna make it go down because we're paying it. So we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm gonna copy the cash. We're gonna skip a line. We're gonna skip another line so we can put it on the bottom. And then we're gonna put it down here on J35. Right click and paste one, two, three. So we're gonna be in the credit side. We're gonna post the credit for the amount that's in the payable of the 240. So it's a negative 240,000. Then we're gonna debit 240,000 to the payable. Why? Because it has 240,000 in it. We're gonna pay it, therefore it needs to go to zero. How do we make something go to zero? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a debit, therefore, Let's copy this account in N25 and paste it to J34. Right click and paste one, two, three. All right, so then we're gonna post this out. So we're gonna post the payable. Here's the payable. Here's the payable on the trial balance and we're gonna post it to the entries column in P27. P27 equals, gonna point to this 240 in accounts payable. That's a debit, this is a credit. Those are opposites, making this go down to zero. And we are, of course, out of balance. Now we're gonna post the cash. Here's the credit to cash. Here's cash up here. Here's where we're gonna post it in P25. There's something in there already. Therefore, we're gonna double click on it. We're gonna to go to the end of it, say plus, and then point to that 240. That's a credit. This is a debit. Therefore, it's gonna go down. Put us back in balance down here. There we have that. Now, note what we have left. We only have cash of 392.5 and our capital balances here, all we need to do then is pay the cash to the capital balances. So we will then pay that out. Do want to point out here that note that these capital balances that are left over may not, are not uh, in relation in proportion to the profit sharing percentages. Keep that in mind people, that's easy to get them that mixed up. It's uh, and that is because th these are the profit sharing percentages, meaning that uh, when we allocate the profit, it will be allocated in this format. However, the uh, partners can take out money at different uh, ratios. They don't have to follow those ratios for when they withdraw the money that is owed to them, reflected by the capital accounts, necessarily, depending on the partnership agreement. But So note that this balance does not necessarily reflect this ratio. Also note that we are now gonna be allocating cash. The cash we're gonna be paying, like a draw, paying the draws out, which is different than when we allocate net income. When we allocate net income, we do allocate according to the profit sharing. Now we're paying out the, the amount of cash that is left. We're gonna pay out in accordance with whatever is owed, represented by the capital accounts. All right, so let's do that with a worksheet first. So we're gonna do that over here cash, it's going to go to zero. We're going to pay all of it out in accordance to these ratios here, these uh, capital account balances. Therefore, we're going to say negative 392500. And then we're just going to pay it out in accordance here. And of course, these add up to 3925. So we're just going to make this go to zero. And again, we're, we're worried about this balance. Then we're going to do the transaction, which is going to make everything zero. And then we're going to have the new balance where everything is, is zero. So we're going to go here and say this is going to be negative 353000 tab. This is going to be negative 185833 tab, negative 153667, and enter. So then we'll just add these up. Oh, undo, undo. We're going to be over here in C32 equals point to the 3925 plus the negative 3925, bringing us down to zero. 
Same thing over here, we're in F32 equals the 53,000 plus the negative 53,000. We're gonna select tab this time, go to the next cell, equals, we're gonna pick the 185, 833 plus the 185, the negative 185, 833 tab equals the 5, 153, 667 plus the negative 153, 667 and enter. So now we're at zeros here, we've closed out, we have now liquidated. We'll do the same thing over here. Let's see the same activity in terms of a trial balance. So now we're left with cash. We're gonna pay off the three capital accounts. Cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go to zero because we're gonna completely pay it off. Therefore, we're gonna, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm gonna right click, copy. Now I wanna put it on the bottom again. So I'm, if to put it on the bottom, I'm gonna skip a line and then I'm gonna skip three more lines. One, two, three for the three partners. And then so the three partners are gonna go here and it's gonna go on the bottom, I'm in cell J40. Right click, paste, one, two, three, and we're gonna pay out the entire amount that is in cash of the 3925. Therefore, this will be a negative 3925, and we will then pay out the partners, not in accordance with their profit sharing ratio, but in accordance with what is owed to the partner represented by the capital count balances here. So we're gonna take these three partners, I'm gonna copy those, right click and copy, we're gonna debit those accounts, making them go down. We're gonna post that, paste that to J37, right click, paste, one, two, three. And I'm just gonna put the amounts that are in their capital accounts. So K has 53,000 in the capital accounts. That's what we're gonna debit. C has this 185833. And M has in the capital account 153667. Do the debits equal the credits? If I highlight the debits, they add up to 9325 in the task bar, that's what the credit is, so they look equal. If I highlight the debits and the credits and subtract them, they add up to zero, therefore the debits equal the credits. And we're gonna post out the K capital. So here's K, where's something, here's where we wanna post it, there's something in it. So I'm gonna double click, go to the end of it, say plus, point to that 53 debit, making this credit go down. We will then post C, so here's C, Here's C, here's where we want to post it. Double clicking, going to the end of it, plus this 185833, making this go down. Then we're gonna post M here, here's M here, here's where we want to post it. Double clicking, going to the end, and plus, pointing to the 153667, making this go down. Then we need the last one, we're gonna post the cash, here's cash, here's cash, here's where we want to post cash, something's in it. Therefore, we will double click on it, go to the end of it, and plus, we're gonna point it, post this 3925, bringing this down, and we're back in balance. Note that now we have all zeros because we have now fully liquidated the partnership. So, recap of the process of liquidating the partnership. We will first sell the inventory, then we will record the gain or the loss, we will take that gain or loss and allocate it to the partners, these three partners in this case, in accordance with their profit sharing agreement. We, we will then take the cash that we have received, pay off the liabilities that we owe, in this case, just the one to accounts payable. Then we'll be left with just cash and the capital accounts. Then we'll pay off the capital accounts in accordance with what is owed, represented by what is in the capital account which doesn't necessarily uh, tie out, which probably most likely will not tie out to the profit sharing percentages. Why do we do it in that way? Because if we do not do it in that way, then it's very possible that uh, we pay out too much to a partner and then we could sell the inventory for, if we sell it for less than we thought, we could be in trouble uh, by the fact that we already gave out the money to a partnership and didn't realize that we were gonna end up with a loss that uh, will cause us trouble. So that is that.